How is it going, Bears fans? Welcome back to another episode of Bear Down Uncut, where we talk everything Bears every day of the week. Today, in episode number 81 of Uncut, we are going to be discussing whether or not Mitchell Trubisky can keep up the late-game magic that we saw him produce in Detroit yesterday throughout the season, uh, obviously more consistently than just in the fourth quarter. I would like to say before we kick this one off, Let's try and set a like goal on this video for 50 likes. You guys have been absolutely killing it with the support recently. Uh, we recently did hit 2.5 5, 000 subscribers, so I would like to say thank you, everyone on YouTube, so much for that. Uh, the grind to 3,000 is now on. We're going to keep putting out content every day of the week. So if you do want Bears content every day of the week, do us a favor and subscribe. Uh, also, click the bell for notifications whenever we post. I am your host, Chris Malpe. And today, uh, to discuss all things Mitchell Trubisky, I am joined with both of my co-hosts, Par Shaw and Jalen McClinton. How's it going, fellas? Uh, how does it feel uh, to wake up on a victory Monday? It, it felt amazing, I'm not going to lie. Uh, you know, with the th way things were going yesterday, I didn't think I'd wake up in a good mood today. But, you know, Trubisky, Mr. F Primetime, uh, fourth quarter Mitch, stepped it up and made sure that we all had a good week and let's we're on to Giants now but let's talk about some Trubisky right now um it feels good for me too you know I've never watched like with my own eyes the Bears go one to know in a long time and it, and it just feels good because you know the, the good thing about going one to know it's a chance for you to go on to and um, that's all that matters yeah uh so uh one more thing I would like to say before uh we get started there's a lot of people in the comments that want us to improve our audio and such. Um, the way we record is in-house, so my audio uh, on my end always tends to be a little bit better. But I would like to say, probably by week three or four, I, I would say within the next 14 days, uh, we are going to put a conservative effort uh, into switching the way we record audio. Uh, we're all going to have microphones, which is something that uh, we, we all haven't been able to afford uh, or a been able to do in the past. And we're also going to switch the platform in which we record our audio. So, uh, yeah, better audio is coming soon. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, the podcast should sound a lot more professional, and we want to get out the best possible and best-sounding content for you guys. So just hold on with us uh, for the Giants week and also maybe the Falcons week, and then the audio is definitely going to start improving a lot. So we are here to talk about Mitchell Trubisky's fourth quarter antics. Uh, look, what I have to say is that it's better to be good, or it's better to be lucky uh, than to be good. And the Bears definitely got lucky yesterday. Uh, at multiple times, uh, you know, Mitch was able to show that he improved last year. Uh, he was able to go through his progression of reads, determine his first option wasn't always available, and it seems like he was able to change course of plans, uh, kind of improvise on the play, keeping it alive and finding another receiver. Uh, I feel like last season you could count on multiple hands, how many times uh, he, he only made one read and didn't go through his progressions. Uh, prior to the fourth quarter yesterday, Trubisky was 12 for 26 with 153 yards and no touchdowns. Uh, a, a lot could be placed on his targets for making poor adjustments or not being able to catch the ball, uh, but Trubisky was a little bit inaccurate and uh, showed not a ton of improvement on his decision makings. Uh, decision making yesterday uh, prior to the fourth quarter but his mechanics definitely did improve I think the footwork could improve a little bit more uh, he, he, he was definitely playing into the reason why the Bears were down as much as they were um, and that's why they only converted two third downs in 10 attempts up until the up until the uh, fourth quarter so heading on into the fourth quarter he went eight for ten for 89 yards and three touchdowns in the fourth quarter quite a swing uh, according to NFL Next Gen Stats, three of his touchdowns in the fourth quarter uh, were all in what NFL Next Gen Stats call a tight window, meaning less than one yard of separation. Uh, Trubisky's three passing touchdowns are the most in a single quarter since Next Gen Stats began tracking five seasons ago. Look, uh, I think we can all agree here. The Bears' offense is at its best when Mitchell Trubisky is not thinking. Uh you know, we, we've known for a while that he's better when you are, are running a fast-paced approach to the offensive play calling, 
uh, and just letting the kid do what he does. Uh, this has been the case for most of Trubisky's career. Uh, I think we can all agree that he tends to overthink his reads when his back is uh, or when his back is is not against the wall. But when it's crunch time, when the Bears need something to happen, uh, Trubisky did come through yesterday, and we're here today to discuss whether or not he can keep that up consistently, not only in Week Two against the New York Giants, who uh, are slated to play tonight against the Pittsburgh Steelers, but also throughout the rest of the season because, once again, we can all agree that you can't be digging yourself that big of holes and expecting comebacks each and every week. So, Parth, I want to start with you. We saw Mitchell Trubisky put on one of the best performances we've seen in his career uh, yesterday and probably have seen one of the best throws he's ever made in his career to Anthony Miller in that corner, very similar to the Thanksgiving game from 2019. So do you think Trubisky can keep this play up consistently uh, throughout the season? I mean, obviously... You can't expect that week in, week out with how inconsistent he's been throughout his career. But do you think that Trubisky can kind of streamline this out and, and be more consistent with that fourth quarter late game play? 100%. Uh, I think what we saw in the fourth quarter is what this offense is going to be this year. Uh, the identity is there. We're, we're a balanced, balanced offense, which helps out Trubisky a lot. The offensive line, in my opinion, was very good yesterday, which also helps Trubisky out. And uh, in, the, in the first three quarters, we saw many of the times the receivers didn't fully run their routes. Like with Allen Robinson, we saw that uh, Jimmy Graham mistimed one of his jumps, uh, which led to a drop. And then here and there, we saw a couple of inaccurate throws. But for the most part, I thought he was fine in the first three quarters. Uh, we weren't able to convert in the red zone, which you know, looked really bad on his part. But other than that, I thought the first three quarters were decent. But in the fourth quarter, we saw the team able to make some plays the receivers were catching some tight contested balls uh he was super accurate like you said he had three three touchdowns all three of his touchdown throws came on one yard separations which is phenomenal if you think about it and uh so if we can keep keep, keep it keep coming not think like he's like he said in his press conference uh, if he doesn't if he stops thinking i think he's going to become a great quarterback for the bears uh, and we could still see that improve as time goes on yeah, and one thing you could also tell yesterday is that the weapons are definitely there. Uh, a little bit of a slow start for Allen Robinson, but we saw him with an incredible circus catch uh, there at the end of the third quarter. Darnell Mooney with uh, three catches for 38 yards. Uh, he's quite the weapon, looking like uh, a grizzled veteran, but he's just a rookie. And then obviously Mike Furry said it in an interview earlier today, uh, you know, we're on the cusp of seeing what Anthony Miller uh, is going to end up becoming in, in his involvement in this offense. So uh, the weapons are there for Trubisky. Uh, we also saw uh, an improved tight end game yesterday. We didn't see anything from Cole Komet, but I think that's the most Jimmy Graham has done in a game for quite some time. And he wasn't too terrible. Uh, dropped two balls that were quite important that probably could have been touchdowns. But outside of that, he was there when he needed to be, and the tight ends were good in blocking. We saw no penalties against anyone on the offensive front. So uh, I, I don't think we can complain with that. It, it, it just comes down to Trubisky, you said it, Parth, getting out of his own head and being able to perform consistently like he was in that fourth quarter because if we want to be able to beat teams that are good, uh, we got the New York Giants next week, uh, I guess maybe, uh, and we have to watch their film from tonight. Depending on how they play, depending on how Daniel Jones has progressed, might be able to get in a little bit of a hole against them, but against good teams like Tampa Bay, uh, even the Indianapolis Colts who lost to the Jaguars yesterday, a team that can be consistent. Uh, the Atlanta Falcons who put up a good fight against uh, Seattle. Uh, against those good teams, we're going to be able to have, we're going to need to have consistent play. So Jalen, do you think he can keep this fourth quarter magic up? And what do you think this win yesterday does for his confidence? It's a it's a huge boost in his confidence, you know. During his press conference yesterday, like the whole time he was not so crazy, he had a huge smile on his face and I haven't seen something from Mitchell in like in, in the in a year or so like that. Even when he was talking about getting a starting job, you know, he was he was serious he had a serious face, you know. Um, not much excitement there. So him having a, a, a smile on his face just just, you know, gets me excited for what what's yet to come this season. Um, like I said, it's a couple things that 
the, this offense still needs to work on. You know, he had like the one you know pass that he threw that was terrible was to Ted again. Uh, was behind him. He didn't even get taken a chance to to catch the ball. And some of his other throws, you know, he I'm pretty sure he wanted back a lot of drop balls too. But um, this this fourth quarter that he had yesterday, um, if we can continue, if we can continue continue this and keep this up and you know still have a running game this offense it, i don't think it's going to be elite but it's going to be able to put points on the board with this defense yeah uh it's definitely also going to come down to the defense stepping up uh they were inconsistent at times yesterday but hoping they can be better uh, i think we all hope that not only will this be a big boost of confidence for mitchell trubisky but it'll lead to him playing more consistently uh in the games down the road that are quite important because the Bears' easiest uh, stretch of the schedule definitely comes in these first four weeks before they face uh, a, a tough challenge, a team that lost yesterday, but still quite the tough challenge in Week 5 when they host Tampa Bay. Thank you guys so much for tuning into Episode number 81 of Uncut. If you want more content from us, head over to our website, BearedDown.com. Uh, you guys have been seeming to like the articles on there, for those of you who have been visiting recently, uh, because there was a spike uh, a spike of visits on the website recently. So we're posting a ton of content over there. If you want more stuff from us, definitely go check it out. If you want sneak peeks of podcasts or want great ways to interact with us, uh, to be able to give us suggestions about what to record on, you can find us on both Instagram and Twitter at Bear Down. And finally, go follow our Bears fan pages. The links to those are in the description. Those are some great follows as well. Uh, we're definitely quite uh, more active on those pages as well when the Bears are winning. So Jalen McClinton, Parsh Shaw, a big week ahead of us. New York Giants, uh, you know, our uploads for the podcast are pushed back a little bit because the Giants do play on a Monday night. But before we go, what do you what do you expect them to be able to get done tonight? And uh, any last words? Uh, I'm excited to see how the Giants play tonight. Uh, I think they play the Steelers, if I'm yeah, not wrong. Yeah, Pittsburgh. Uh, but, yeah, they play Pittsburgh. Uh, they got decent off weapons on offense. If Daniel Jones can take a leap in year two, which I feel like he will, uh, the Giants can be a pretty scary team. And uh, we did face them last year, and we did squeak out a win last year. So let's see what happens tonight and uh, review some film and then head into week two. Yeah, same here. Um, I want to see how Daniel Jones and Saquon Bark and all those weapons on offense do against Pittsburgh defense. Pittsburgh has a very solid defense. It kind of turned it around for them last year. Almost get, gave them a playoff spot, but um, that's about it. Um, we have football today, and that's, that's all. You know, I can't be mad at that at all. Bear yeah, uh, a doubleheader tonight on Monday Night Football. We've got Steelers, Giants, and then Broncos, Titans. Should be a good night. Uh, definitely a late night of film review for us as we make our Week 2 preparations. But it should be a good week, and let's hope Mitchell Trubisky can keep playing like he did in that fourth quarter when he comes back home to Soldier Field on on a Sunday uh, to face the Giants. It's been a pleasure to be your host. Once again, my name is Chris Malpe. Bears fans, enjoy this Monday. We're 1-0 for the first time since 2013. And do us a favor, as always, stay safe and bear down. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.